Black American Aristocrats. From James Fortune to Mary Church Terrell to Frank Thomas to quite a few beautiful African Americans. They experienced the struggle and hardship, but these particular beautiful Americans were never victims. They did practice patience. They were discreet in all their manners of etiquette, and they chose to develop skills and share together. One thing about them, they knew that they were the keepers of the culture. The keepers of rituals, of heritage, they were the providers of care for the elders, for the children, for the widows, and they knew in order to complete this journey, it would have to be the journey of acceptance. The opportunity to walk upon Fisk University campus was exciting. The story of Fisk University and Jubilee Hall, the Jubilee Singers, it's known world over. If you haven't heard of them, I encourage you to look them up. I put together my own aristocrat handbook that focused on the codes that Benjamin Papp Singleton and many others shared, and that was freedom. Freedom in education, freedom in culture, freedom in morality, freedom in wealth. They were quite exciting, and I looked forward to going down in Memphis and discovering Robert Church and his family, and even stopping by his family tomb. There were people like Ida B. Wells and her family that focused on being optimistic, setting goals and investing, having a work ethic like the families that were at the Promised Land in Tennessee, that once the enslavement stopped, they were able to build their own communities on faith and knowledge and on service. There was a time when we all knew that service is a privilege that patience and discretion is very important and to develop our skills. When it came to these wonderful people at home, they knew that to be African, to be brown, to be a people of color meant to embrace their ethnicity, that their cultural uniqueness was their identity. They were able to embrace the beautiful things in their home, and they cherished having teas and having company over. I even started an aristocrat of, of color tea, which was a lot of fun. I enjoyed learning about the folklore and all its historical art forms. I even created a few games of my own and even created my own money using the knowledge that I had about uh, African Americans, about us being stolen, uprooted, separated, and actually surviving. I was able to learn from my Grandpa David and my Grandma Betty Jane in North Carolina, and also from library books, and then I created my own library in my own home. I hope you've done something similar. When we share and tell our own family narratives and embrace our Africanness and our Americanness, I think we come alive fully. Of course, Manners was high on the list of these beautiful aristocrats. There were books written, and Ebony Magazine even put out um, articles with Jerry Majors, who was amazing. She did a lot of society magazines. And then, of course, there was Charlotte Hawkins Brown, who was considered the first lady of social graces. I loved going down to North Carolina and visiting her home. It was simply amazing. Charlotte Hawkins Brown created the 
Palmer Memorial Institute, and it was a finishing school uh, for African Americans, for young men and for young ladies. She taught them how to be comfortable in any situation, how to study independently, and of course, how to dress, how to play games in semi-formal ways and informal ways. In other words, she taught the art of fine living. I discovered in communities across this beautiful nation that there were people of color that were teaching good manners, proper dress, and social graces from Seattle to Philadelphia to Nashville. I mean, you name it, it was there. Of course, I was giving tea since I was 10, so my beautiful granddaughters and my daughters, they have had to have tea with me. Uh, we still have tea and hold them daily. We also love going to historical black colleges. We love having our own teas and our garden teas together. It's so important that we continue to embrace and like John H. Johnson says, change our image, show who we really are. It is all in the details from the way you place your china to a candle to a simple plate that you might have a scone on or perhaps tea. It's in the details of how you treat others and how you're open in willingness. And definitely, it's very important to be gracious. They recorded their history, so it's always been there. I enjoy going to North Carolina, asking my Aunt Belle about our history, as well as my cousin Glenn. And I enjoy, whether it's a brooch or whether it's a tree that came from Louisiana, I enjoy sharing those things. I enjoy being out in my garden and sharing my garden with people. And yes, even the birds. One thing these beautiful black American aristocrats did have was the ability to leave a life legacy. So for me, I choose to leave a life legacy of my garden and a life legacy of my social graces classes and a legacy of service to this country, service to humanity. And also, of course, a legacy to scone making, which my granddaughters have had the opportunity to share in I've shared with my grandchildren the businesses that I've had in Seattle and even just sharing with my daughter the love of color, the love of picking flowers, the love of being in love and picking a partner, and definitely the love of being at an African American university, a historical black university, and being together with those that you love and those that love you. I have many people from John Ray on that I've learned financial investments and how to save properly and what to spend on, from my granny to James Fortin and many others. There are so many books out there that share about aristocrats of color, of black society, of people who've not only made a fortune, but of people who have made a life. And I hope that you have found this video fitting and I hope that you start looking at your own legacy and that you too live a life.